Sunshine. The 1993 Dream can cruise at a speed of 86 kilometers per hour under pure solar energy. When you kick in the batteries, we can go over 130 kilometers per hour. What modifications have you made to the aerodynamics? It's mostly come from the underbody aerodynamics. We use a turntable which pivot uh, the wheels and the spats at the same time, and this has greatly improved the underbody characteristics. What materials have you employed in making the wheels? This year the wheels are made of magnesium. We went that route because they're stronger and lighter weight and also for the rear wheel we have the in-wheel mount motor and it would have been impossible to use the string wheel as before. David, you have brought two cars. What's the purpose in that? Mainly one is the test car and we'll be able to swap pieces and components as we go through the race as we need them. And in preparing the car there are just two core molds? Uh, the upper shell is a one-piece monocoat carbon fiber, and so is the lower half. What's the power capacity of the solar cells? Uh, the expected output from the array will be over 1,500 watts. And your battery system? We've more than doubled what we had in 1990. We're going with uh, almost the maximum allowable 5 kilowatt hours. With the last of the pre-race trialing completed, the next task for each car is scrutineering. The first car to be checked is the local school, Dripstone High. The car and its solar array is very carefully measured. 5910. The rules state that the car, when it is in motion, must be able to fit in an imaginary box six meters long and two meters wide. The solar cells can only be four meters long. The car, however, when stationary, can be tilted in the imaginary box, thereby gaining an extra width of solar cells. This is used to advantage during the race when cars recharge their batteries in the morning before 8 a.m. and after 5 p.m. in the evening, thus increasing their charging rate by 8 to 10%. The minimum height for the driver's eyes when in the car is 700 millimetres. This measurement is carried out using a laser light. Team leader Don Sheraton watches as a rigorous inspection of the car's structure and components is carried out and the checklist completed. The solution is now going through scrutineering. What sorts of things do they look for? Oh, they're looking to make sure that uh, we are in complying with the spirit of the, uh, the regulations. For instance, uh, they're using a different system of, to our, to our view anyway, of uh, putting in the ballast weight. The drivers of Solution have an average weight of 50 kilograms. The rules allow for a minimum driver weight of 80 kilograms, hence the car has to carry 30 kilograms of lead ballast. Most importantly, the cars have to be roadworthy. The maximum capacity allowed in the battery pack is five kilowatt hours. This requirement is checked very carefully to see that a car does not have an unfair advantage. The batteries are sealed and these seals must reach Adelaide intact. The only part of the car that must complete the course unchanged is the battery pack. To get one of these cells which we selected at random from this battery two days ago, we gave it a discharge test uh, under certain specifications and we sat with the battery all night, 20 hours, and we found that it met the specifications and so we were able to say that this battery meets the race uh, uh, specifications and the team can now run. Honda, Aurora and Nissan have only entered one car in this race, but these cars have identical twins which are also put through scrutineering to establish that they conform to the rules. These second cars provide a complete set of spare parts for their twin. 
Other cars are designed to carry two people, a driver and a passenger. The rules for this class allow the whole car to be covered with solar cells. Chester, you've seen all the cars going through scrutineering. What are the innovations you've noticed this year? I'd say real innovations. Uh, there are about uh, three or four that I thought were very, very uh, progressive. Uh, one is a, a motor that's uh, entirely enclosed in the rear wheel. And there are three teams that have those. Uh, one is Northern Territories University. Dean Patterson, I believe, uh, professor, designed that one. And uh, there's also uh, Wheel Motor and Beal, the Swiss team, and Honda, the Japanese team. I think probably the most innovative would be Dean Patterson's motor. It's uh, based upon uh, pancake design, where the, the rotor and the uh, um, uh, the magnets are located on plates which uh, uh, surround the shaft and the thing that's unusual about this is in order to change the speed, the design speed of the motor for optimum efficiency all you have to do is space the plates uh, together or apart. Uh, the motors of uh, Honda and Beale are also very clever. Uh, they're based on a drum design where the uh, windings are stationary and the magnets rotate uh, with the wheel. Uh, they're harder to adjust, but on the other hand, potentially they may have a little higher efficiency than Dean Patterson's. But anyway, those are distinctly <clears throat> an improvement because you don't have any transmission losses. If it's 94% efficient or 95% efficient, the motor, then that's exactly how much energy you're putting into the road or into the tire, and so you automatically have a uh, about a 5% power advantage over someone that uses a transmission. So those cars are going to go a lot faster because of that innovation. Uh, the second category of innovations, I think, would be aerodynamics. Uh, the, uh, uh, I think the best treatments probably would be also an Australian car. One is uh, Aurora, which is uh, members of, uh, I think they work for Ford, most of them, uh, Ford of Australia. They have a very short car, very thin car, where the the uh, cab is uh, the canopy uh, cockpit is right in the middle of the car. It has two wheels. It's a tricycle, two wheels back and one wheel forward. There's only a couple of cars in the race like that, but it's very very compact design, very thin design. Uh, they had a little hard luck uh, putting together the panel. Uh, their epoxy didn't cure right and so they, I think they kind of uh, have a little rumple in the panel and so and then they have a motor that uh, is an older motor not so efficient and so they may not do as well as expected but if the car was actually running you could expect them to be up in the top three if it was actually running right they may not they may not do that but the potential is there that's a very clever thing uh, uh, both Honda 